Betty coming on the life. So tonight, I'm going to be sharing a word for the glory of God. But I just want to worship. I just want the Lord to inhabit this live stream. So if you guys can like the live and share the live so that we can reach as many as we can. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm going to pray over the live stream really quick. How do you do what, Tony? Oh, Jesus, have your way tonight, Father God. We just give you glory, oh Lord. Give glory unto it. Oh, just tap. Tap the screen. Keep tapping it. Also, guys, I am not taking uh, live requests. Um, It's because uh, God gave me a word to share, and I can't have um, too many distractions. Amen. So I'm going to take a few prayers and then I'm going to get straight into the word. Also, guys, if uh, if you guys would follow me on my YouTube account, I don't know what's going to happen to TikTok. I'm praying for TikTok. Uh, Happy Good Friday, uh, Stucky homie. (laughs) God bless you. Um, If you guys will follow my YouTube account, because I need 50 uh, subscribers in order to go live on there. And uh, like like I was saying, I don't know what's going to happen to TikTok. They're, they're saying uh, that they're banning it. Whatever the Lord wills. Amen. I'm praying that uh, God would intervene and save this app because I know that uh, it reached it. Look at it. I learned so much on TikTok. I learned so much about Jesus on, on just on TikTok. I... For God's glory, these videos that God leads me to share help so many people. And uh, to tell you the truth, I do have a heavy heart about it. But um, we're just going to have faith and we're going to trust God in whatever he plans to do. Amen. But like I was saying, if you guys can... uh, follow me if you guys go follow me on youtube and i always forget my youtube i always forget it carla do you know my youtube account i think it's christina marino 89 can you post it for me hi hannah god bless you thank you jesus have your way holy spirit have your way can you guys hear the music Thanks for the roses, guys. God bless you. Can you guys hear the music or is it too loud? Christina Marino. Okay, how do I pin comments? Oh, pin this comment. That's my YouTube. Uh, if I need 50 subscribers, guys, so that I can go uh, live on there. And the reason why, uh, look it. I mean, even if they do shut down TikTok, I, I, of course I can use Instagram. But the only downside of uh, Instagram is because only followers, only my followers could watch the live stream. And uh, I do love to reach a wide uh, variety of people, a wide audience, not just the people who follow me. You know what I mean? Uh, I think of TikTok as kind of like a street preaching kind of thing. It's just like you get on this live stream and then you don't know who's going to come on. Amen. 
not just the believer. I, I love to reach the non-believers, whoever could, will, could just come across these live streams and they, and they could stick around and hear the word of God. Amen. So if you guys would please, God bless you guys, um, subscribe to my YouTube channel so that we can go live on there and reach the masses. Amen. That's what it's about to preach the gospel to the nations. It's me, New Miley. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you, Miley. And God bless everybody who's on this uh on this live tonight. I pray that God blesses you guys. I pray that he would keep you guys. I pray that his peace would fall fresh on you in the name of Jesus. Maybe Violet. Pray for complete healing. Father, I lift up uh Violet before you, Father God. And I thank you for Violet, and I thank you, Heavenly Father, for what you are going to do. You are showing up, and you are going to show off, Father, in the name of Jesus. We ask the blood of Jesus to fall fresh on her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, Father Lord. I pray, Jesus, that she will gain the weight that is needed, Father God, to get her out of the NICU unit, Father. I do pray this, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, for all her vital organs to... Uh, to grow, to prosper, Lord Jesus, to um, develop. That's the way. Jesus. I pray that she will develop in the name of Jesus, I pray. And Lord, that her family will testify of the goodness of the Lord in your holy name. Amen. Can you guys hear me? Because something happened to my AirPod just now. wasn't talking to you Siri <laughs> all right I'm gonna pray over the life father we ask Lord Jesus that you will have your way tonight Jesus have your way with me hide me behind your cross father God I pray father Lord for your peace to fall fresh on me Lord help me to not be nervous calm every nerve in me father God I pray, Jesus, that you would help me to get used to live streams, Father, that I don't be nervous on each and every one of them, Father, that I do. But I pray, God, that you would help me to go live more often, Father, so that I don't have the jitters anymore, Father. But I do pray for your courage and your confidence, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray your hedge of protection upon this live stream, Father. I come against distraction. I come against um, wandering minds, Father. I pray, Lord Jesus, that... Uh, we will focus all tonight. I pray, God, that you get the glory in it all, Father. I pray for this word, Jesus, that it would fall on good soil, O Lord. I pray for the fire of the Holy Spirit to fall fresh on each and every one of us, Father. I pray that you would bring on who, who is meant to be on tonight, Father God, for your glory. I pray for ears to hear. I pray for eyes to see. I ask, Lord Jesus, that this word would fall on good soil. Father, that their hearts would receive it. I pray, devil of Jesus, that we will have a mind to comprehend in your holy name. I pray, God, that you would anoint me to share your awesome and mighty word, Father God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you, Lord, would just truly protect this life, Father. And bless the viewers, Father God, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. And guys, if I don't see your prayers, just know that I got uh, I got some people on here who is standing in the gap and lifting up your prayers. Amen. Jacob in prayer. His asthma been really bad. Father, I lift up Jacob before you, Father God. And first and foremost, we just want to thank you for Jacob, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for... Uh, fashioning him lord jesus creating him father and i thank you lord for what you're going to do through him Mubadal. i ask lord jesus that you would heal him from asthma open his lungs jesus 
to the capacity that you created them to be open to breathe how they are supposed to be, uh, to how he's supposed to breathe, Lord. You breathe into him, Father, and you would attack, Lord, that asthma. We command asthma to leave from him in the name of Jesus, Lord, and Father, that every breath that he takes, Father, Lord Jesus, we know that breath only comes from you, Father. But I pray, Jesus, that it won't be a struggle for him to breathe any longer. But, Lord, that his lungs will breathe in enough air that he needs, Lord Jesus. In your holy, precious name, I pray for peace over him. Peace over his mother, Tanya. Peace over his father, Mugodel. And I pray, Father God, that you will surround him with your glory and the blood of Jesus to touch his lungs and to touch him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, God bless you, but I, uh, tonight I'm not going to take any, um, requests to come, uh, to, to come live only because, um, I'm going to be sharing God's word and we just want to stick to one topic. Amen. Don't give up. Hallelujah, Jesus, you have your way, Isaac and Ella, for them Jesus, to speak. I pray for Isaac and Ella, Father. We bring them before you, Lord, and we just pray, Father, healing, healing upon them, Father God. Lord, loosen their tongue. I pray, Jesus, the way you you did for the mute man, Father God, and the child that couldn't speak. I know. Um, because I could see your your guys' uh, comments. It says pause. It's fixed. Is It's better? Okay. Thank you, Jesus. It was my Wi-Fi, guys. My Wi-Fi is trash. You pay so much money a month for good Wi-Fi, supposedly top of the line, but trash. Junk. <laughs> Pray for my Wi-Fi, guys. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, Father God. I give God the glory. I hope that everybody had a good, um, good Friday today. That we remember what it was actually about, what Jesus did. I just, guys, I feel led to pray for the Romania. That we... We remember truly, thank you, Molly, that we remember what Good Friday actually was about and that it's not used as a day just to um, drink and party. Guys, my heart is grieved. <laughs> Hold on. Sorry, guys, I'm getting... Let me put my phone on. Do not... Dis He's done. Sorry, guys, I'm getting... Let me put my phone on. Do not... Dis I didn't know how to respond. How do you know the Bible is true? Because... You know, it's a really good question. How do you know the Bible is true? Because the Bible is not just a bunch of words written down. The Bible is alive. The word of God is alive. The word of God is Jesus. See, Jesus is the word. And when you have Jesus in your life and you read the written word of God, you, amen, through the testimony of others, amen, God bless you, uh, Carla. And when you read the word of God and it's made alive to you, 
it's hard to go back. It's it's tangible. It's real. It's life and it's life changing. Amen. Amen. See what Tony's talking about because my brother is is very anointed in in that area to uh in in apologetics where he proves the bible to be true he proves god and jesus and the holy spirit to be true he is uh anointed in that area and he's gifted in that area me i don't have a a way with words the way that tony does to to um tell a non-believer about these things i just tell them my testimony i i testify of what jesus did in my life and i can't go back on my testimony he's made himself real to me he's realer than the ground that we walk on he's realer than the breath in our lungs and when you have that experience i just point them to the cross i just tell them about jesus and what he's done in my life and then i usually just pray with them and uh usually when i pray with the people they they feel something they'll feel um the holy spirit and they can't deny it amen nothing else will do but just want you nothing else Thank you Jesus I feel your spirit Father Holy Spirit have your way da ya da lo da she did and I shin ro pako Isa re de re ke randa to soy da mahashaya El oro con raíz y chicaya taba she she de na ba san da lo ro ko ro to da ishi Thank you Jesus Sierra manana re asa y de ke Indoroko son de 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 que me da lo ta ya sha e shiki de de que sea Narata lo ta ishi sarabaka ta yena na bese Have your way Jesus have your way de shoro do lo ko son de de ya sarabaka ta ye Indre que se to na na ishi sero to lo ro da raba ha sara ya sha shanto to ro do ko Thank you Jesus for whoever this is for I was as I was praying in the spirit I seen a ladder and the, this is a confirmation for somebody climb it move forward whatever whatever you've been asking God God is giving you the goal to climb to move forward in it amen Hallelujah Jesus Hey Glory 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 Jesus Thank you Jesus okay I want I want to share the word but I um I'm waiting. God wants me to wait. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So while we're waiting, let's pray. If you guys want to put up your prayers. Type up your prayers and we'll lift them up for the glory of God. Sure. Amen. Sayera to soya mashandara yeshi. Hora baba satoye ke tele rona nai thank you jesus type up your prayers guys and i'll lift them up for you guys please pray for me so i can be bold with the holy spirit so i can write poems amen oh is this katie
Amen. Yes, I'll pray for you, Katie. Lord, I lift up Katie before you, and I thank you, Father God, for her zeal. I thank you for her passion, Father, that you placed in her heart. I thank you for the desire that she has, Lord, to serve you, Jesus, to bring glory unto your name. I pray, Jesus, that you would ignite her, Father, like a bolt of lightning, Jesus. I pray for the power, the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit to indwell within her, too. Lord, that she would tap into his power, God. And Lord Jesus, that you would give her that boldness, that you would give her the courage, the confidence, Father, the peace of mind that she needs, Jesus, to go forward and and do what you called her to do, Father. I pray for a fresh fresh anointing, O Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray, God, that you would anoint her hands to do every good work that you have called her to do, Father. I pray, Jesus, that you would break uh, chains of bondage, Lord, that's holding her back from doing your goodwill, Father. I pray, Jesus, that whatever is in her life, Lord, that is not from you, uproot it, remove it, Father, and curse it to the ground, Jesus. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that she would prosper in all that she does for you, Murdao. Lord, I pray for spiritual growth, Father. I pray, Father God, for whatever hurts her, Jesus. I come against anxiety. I come against fear in the name of Jesus, Lord. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that whatever is pain, whatever hurts her, whatever is causing pain in her life, Jesus, I pray, God, that you would remove it. But, Father, if there's a thorn in her side, Jesus, I pray, Devla, that she would rejoice in it, Father God. And that she would know that your grace is sufficient for her, Father. I just pray for your breakthrough. In Jesus' name, my God. Hallelujah. In the name of this song is Your Presence is Enough by Rick Pino and Abby Gamboa. Yes, amen. I lift up Sonny before you, Father God. And we just pray, God, that you lose his tongue, Father. I come against autism, Father. If that's if that's what it is, Jesus, we rebuke it in Jesus' name. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that you would bring a release over, over this child, Father, and over every child who's dealing with it, Father, in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Father, for freedom, 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 freedom in every area. Thank you, Jesus. And we just ask, Father God, that you put peace over the family members, Lord, who are struggling, Father, the parents of those who have autism. I pray, Jesus, for a supernatural joy to fall upon their life, Jesus, a supernatural faith, God, a supernatural peace which surpasses all understanding, Lord. And I pray, Father, for a grace to fall within their heart, Jesus. Help them to keep waiting for you, Father. And Lord, to never give up, Father, but to always hope in you, O Lord. I pray for their hope, Lord, to be restored in the name of Jesus, God. And I just ask, Father, that you, Lord, would just bring that deliverance, Father. Do what only you can do, the blood of Jesus upon every child, Lord. And Father, even if it's not autism, we come against every everything, Father, that holds your children's tongue, Father. We come against every spirit, Father God, that is against you, Father, that holds your your people's tongue from speaking and proclaiming the goodness of God, Lord. I pray, Father God, that you would break the chains, Father, in your holy precious name. Thank you, Jesus. 
We just give glory unto you, Father. We just give you glory, Father God. God bless everybody. I've seen somebody say they're here for the first time. Amen. We're happy to have you here. God bless you. Uh, I'm about to get into the word. God gave me a word. And uh, guys, it, it really touched my heart. It touched my heart to, to see Jesus in creation. Amen. And uh, the Lord gave me this word uh, oof, about a week, 10 days ago. But I wanted to share it on Good Friday because it's just so fitting. And the name of this word, guys, is called Anoint My Heart for Burial. And I just ask, Father, that you will have your way. Have your way, Father God. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. You use me for your glory in Jesus' holy name. Okay. Let's get into it, guys. Matthew, for whoever wants to read along. It's in Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. And like I said, the title of this word is called Anoint My Heart for Burial. Jesus. Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. And I'm reading in the New King James, guys. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, we are going to focus on one of these gifts, but I'm going to tell you guys what uh, each of these gifts represented and why why did why did the uh, the wise men give Jesus a baby these things in the first place each one represented something and uh it was to show who Jesus was amen hey girl god bless you can you guys hear the, the music? Is it too loud? Amen. All right, before I get into it, guys, could you guys hear me? Okay. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So the first one I want to talk about is the gold. Why did wise men bring gold, frankincense, and myrrh to Jesus? The gold, they brought gold to Jesus because it showed Jesus as king. And the reason why is because people back then always gave gold as a gift to kings. Amen. Now, we know Jesus to be the king of all kings. And so gold was a royal gift to those who, who were in royalty. Amen. And so we see in 1 Kings 10.10. 10, let me go there, guys. The queen of Sheba gave a gift of gold to uh, Solomon, King Solomon. But I want to read that to you guys. 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 10. I am lifted up. Then she gave the king 120 talents of gold, spices in great quantity, and precious stones, 
There never again came such abundance of spices as the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Amen. Amen. God bless you and all glory goes to God. So gold was given to kings. So when these wise men came, you got to imagine, they're... They come and they see uh, this baby with Jesus. And Jesus could have been anywhere from an infant to two years old, according to scripture. Amen. So he might have not been a brand new, like, newborn. But he was probably a toddler around this time. And they came down. And I, I, I'm i just imagining, like, when the wise men came there. When the wise men came and just to, just thinking about Mary and Joseph watching these grown men fall down and worship this baby. And they gave this gold to him prophetically, stating that Jesus, this baby, was the king of kings. Amen. Next one. Frankincense. Frankincense was used by high priests for sacrifices in the temple. Amen. This shows that they recognized him as the only high priest able to atone for the sin of the world by becoming the sacrificial lamb, signifying his deity. Oh, hi, Cheyenne. God bless you. I always love having family members come on the live streams to watch. Amen. So the frankincense, what would happen is just to give you guys a little bit of breakdown, but these are not the things that I want to focus on. The The one gift that I want to focus on tonight is uh, the myrrh. But I just want to give you guys an idea of these wise men and why they gave baby Jesus these gifts. So the frankincense was used by the high priests. Now, for those of us who don't know what the high what the high priest was, they were God's special people back then before before um Jesus died on the cross. Remember, Jesus is a baby, and so all in those um ancient days there needed to be atonement for sin. There had to been a sacrifice and only a Levitical priest could have gone into the temple and uh, they only they could have sacrificed and uh, sprinkled the blood onto onto the mercy seat into the Holy of Holies. Only the high priest could have gone there once a year and uh, nobody else. So. This frankincense was uh, was used and it, it represented the prayers of the saints. Amen. It, it represented the prayers of the people and it would they would burn this in the temple and it would reach um, the, the throne of God and it would be a pleasing aroma to him. Amen. It was for the sacrifices in the temple. So they gifted this frankincense to Jesus, stating that he was the high priest. That he would atone for the sin of the world. Making a way for all of mankind to come to God freely. That we don't have to go to a man anymore for the, for the covering of our sin. But Jesus paid the price. Jesus Jesus beca- became high priest and atoned for our sins. They're not covered. They're washed away by his blood. Amen. He came down on this earth and became that final sacrifice, the atonement for our sin. Hallelujah. And we don't need to go to uh, a priest So that they can go once a year. We don't have to do that. We can come to God right here, right now. And enter into his presence. That's how beautiful. That's how beautiful Jesus is. 
That's why he had to come because nobody else could have done it. He had to come down in the flesh. And because of his beautiful sacrifice, we, he now dwells in these temples. We don't have to go to Jerusalem. We don't have to go to Jerusalem into the, well, the temple's not there anymore, but I'm just saying uh, back then, you don't, the people would have to travel to Jerusalem so that they can offer their sacrifices for the, for the atonement of their sins. We don't have to do that no more. We can get on our knees or we could just talk to Jesus right here because it's a relationship. Amen. Because he made it that way. He tore the veil. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus, for what you did on this day, Father Lord. We give you glory. Next one, and this is the one that I want to talk about. This is the, the one we're going we're gonna to stick to tonight, and it was myrrh. This was the, the third um, gift that was given to Jesus when he was a baby. Okay, so what, is, what was myrrh? Amen. Mer don't pay attention to the comments, guys. Doesn't matter. God bless them. And mer, you okay? Mer, mer is like a little rock. That's what it looks like. Mer is a rock. Um, Carla, if you can uh, pay attention to the comments, if there's if there's anything rowdy, just just deal with that for me. Amen. Mer was a. Uh, was a rock and it was specifically used it was a spice that's what it was forgive me guys it's a spice that it was very aromatic it was very beautiful smelling amen but what was myrrh used for it was used to embalm dead bodies the Jews would use this to um, embalm their, their past loved ones. And uh, what it was is, I guess, what it would do is it would um, preserve the, the, the body from decaying. And, and I guess killing the smell, I guess, guys. But there was more, and I don't know why I didn't write it down, but there was more. Myrrh was also used to uh, as a disinfectant. Uh, it was very, um, it was used as perfumes. Amen. Now, why did they give myrrh to a baby? It was used, it was used uh, to embalm a dead body. So the reason why was it symbolized that Jesus was born to die. It was a foreshadow of his death. Amen. He came on this earth for one specific reason. And that was for him to become sin, to take our place. Amen. So they gave Jesus this, uh, this gift as a foreshadow of his death. He was the ultimate sacrifice. Amen. So let's get into it. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, Father God. Where does myrrh come from? Myrrh comes from a small thorny tree called Camiphora myrrha. And the Greek meaning for kamifora is a two-compound word. And the first one is kami, meaning gum, and uh, phoros, meaning bearing. And mura comes from the Hebrew root word mara, which means bitterness. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the story of uh, Ruth, her mother-in-law, Naomi, when her... When her, uh, uh, her husband died, and her sons as well, she changed her name. She changed her name to Mara, which means bitterness, because she was broken for her husband and her sons. She became a widow, 
uh, overnight. So her, she changed her name to Mara. Remember, Mara is, it, it, Mer comes from this root word Mara and it means bitterness. So gum, gum bearing and bitter. I know I, I'll make sense of it after this. So this tree guys would grow in a, it, it was, it was a small thorny tree that grows on slopes and valleys. It grows in deserts. Now I'm going to make sense of that in a minute. And it grows um, native to Eastern and Northeast Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. Kamifora Mura grows at an elevation of 820 to 4,270 feet. So it grows high up, guys. And uh, it grows in an area where it's it only has a yearly rainfall. It does best with thin soil, and it grows in areas where there is limestone. All right, I'm going to stop there because I want to explain why all of this, uh, why is all of this necessary? That it grows on slopes, it grows in valleys, and it grows in deserts. Let's talk about the Israelites. When Jesus, no, when God uh, took the Israelites out of Egypt and he led them in the Exodus, amen, where was they taken? They was taken into the, de into the desert. They was taken into the wilderness and they walked this wilderness for 40 years. Now, it was a very hard time for... It was a very hard time for the Israelites to leave. Even though they were in slavery, they were comfortable in their slavery because their flesh um, liked it to eat and drink and they had, you know, what they needed. But when, G when God took them out of Egypt and led them into uh, the wilderness, it was uncomfortable for them. You see, the desert had to cause their flesh to die. Amen. Jesus took them out of Egypt, led them into the wilderness so that Egypt can come out of their heart. Now, Egypt represents the world, guys, in case you guys didn't uh, catch it. Egypt represents the world. And this is what Christians go through. Uh, when we first come to Christ, God will take us into a wilderness season so that the world can come out of our heart and this wilderness can can be very very uncomfortable if you are a seasoned christian you know what the wilderness is but i want to talk to uh if there's a baby christian in here who might be going through their first wilderness it's normal and you gotta go through it you, it, it's inevitable. The, the, and the reason why is because what the world stored into you, God's got to take it out now. Because he's making you a new creation. You are a new creation in Christ. You can't have the old anymore. Amen. So the old you has to die and the new you has to rise with Christ. Amen. Now do you guys kind of get what the... What, uh, what this myrrh means. You see, Jesus had to die in order for us to have life. When we come to Christ, our old ways have to die. So let's go back to this tree. It grows at an elevation. See, Jesus is high and exalted. So even though this tree grows in the wilderness, it's still exalted with Christ. It's still uh, with the Lord, amen. We're still, even though we feel like we're we're down and out, and we're broken, busted, and disgusted, depressed and miserable in the in the valley and in the wilderness, because that's what it feels like. I'm telling you guys the truth. Valleys don't feel good. They're not supposed to feel good. But something happens in the valley. A new 
a rebirth happens in the valley. Amen. This, this, uh, Sarato Shonde Keshi Arabasa. Thank you, Jesus. We might go through like a bitter moment in, uh, in the wilderness, but guess what? When you hold on to Christ, when you hold on to His hand, when you believe and trust in Him, something happens. We get crushed. And the pleasing aroma comes out of us. Amen? Because in order for a sweet smell to come out of the myrrh, it had to have been crushed. Now let's go back to Jesus. Let's go back to the Lord, what, what happened there. Like I said, guys, myrrh had to be crushed in order to release the sweet aroma. The wilderness represents a time in a Christian's life when things aren't easy. When you feel like God is not there, but he's always been there all along. When you... When everything starts to get really tough and, and all you have is your fate to cling to, that's your wilderness. When everything looks like it's, it's chaotic around you, when everything looks like you don't know what's going to happen, but all you can do is just hope in God that he's going to provide for you and that he's going to get you through the valley so that he can take you to the mountain. Amen. That's what a valley is. That's what the wilderness represents hard times for for christians but in the valley like i said we have to be crushed myrrh had to be crushed in order for a sweet aroma to come out of it now let's go to isaiah 53 10. isaiah 53 10 says but it was the lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. They're ta he's talking about Jesus. It was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. Amen. That was in the NLT. So, it ple in another translation, it says, it pleased God to crush his son. It pleased him. When Jesus endured the suffering, when he was inflicted with pain, when they, when they spit it on him, when they ripped the beard out of his face and they mocked him and they told him that he, he was filled with demons. He was a demon-possessed man. I come against that in Jesus' name. And they told him these things and they, they uh, basically slandered him all the way to the cross. That pleased God. It pleased God. Why? because of the redemptive work that he did. It pleased him that Jesus denied himself. He denied his flesh for us, for me, for you, so that you can be saved for the remission of our sins, amen? It pleased God to crush his son. Now, when we go through these valleys, guys, we feel like we're being crushed. See. Jesus had to have been crushed and it released a beautiful aroma unto God when he was crushed for our sin. Let's go to Romans 6, 4 through, uh, Romans 6, 4 through 6. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God, we just thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Father God. Romans 6. Hang on, guys. And I'm reading from the New King James. If then you... If then you have judgments concerning things pertaining to this life, do you appoint those who are least esteemed by the church to judge? I say this to your shame. Is it so? 
that there is not a wise man among you, not even one, who will be able to judge between his brethren. Is this the scripture? Hold on, guys. I'm sorry. Hold on, guys. But brother goes to law. Between his brother. But brother goes to law against brother. And that before unbelievers. It tells me to go to the NLT. Hold on one second. I think I got the wrong scripture, guys. You restore everything. Okay. Here we go. That's why I was in 1 Corinthians. No sense. <laughs> Here we go. Romans 6, uh, 4 through 6. It says, Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life, for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. So that was the New King James. Let me read it in the NLT. For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives, excuse me guys, since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. Amen. That was verse 7, guys. Thank you, Jesus. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. Listen to that. I'm going to read that one more time. See, Jesus died on the cross that we may obtain salvation. He died on the cross so that we can enter into his salvation. He did not give us a license to sin. Amen. He didn't die so that you can sin. He didn't die so that I could sin. But look at what it says here, Romans 6, 7. He said, for when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. See, Jesus, he destroyed death, hell, and the grave. He did that for us. But now it's up to us to walk with him in relationship and let our old life die. Because it says, for when we died with Christ, then we were set free from the power of sin. We didn't get set free from sin until we actually die with him. That's what this scripture is saying. So he's not saying, I died so that you can continue to sin. He died so that we can be set free from the power of it. Amen. Amen. Now let's go back to this myrrh. When we die with Christ, what does it look like when to die to Christ? We go through these valleys in our life. We go through these wilderness seasons. Whatever that looks like for you, it's a hard season of denying yourself. 
when your flesh wants to rise up, when you feel tempted to do things that we know are against God, it's denying what you want and crucifying it to the cross so that you and I can be pleasing unto God so that we can walk in that obedience. Amen. But we got to be crushed. We have to be crushed. So now I want to go back to uh, the limestone, guys. Like I said, this tree, Kamifora Mura, comes from, uh, basically, it says it's at the Arabian Peninsula, which is a very dry area. There's very little rain, and this tree grows by limestone. Amen. Now, when God was showing me this, I asked him, okay, what is limestone? What does that have to do with anything? What is, we, I, I told him, I know you want to show me something through this. So what is limestone? And uh, then he told me, look up the tomb. What kind of stone, stone did Jesus what kind of stone was the tomb that Jesus was buried in? And lo and behold, the tomb that they carved, uh, the, the rock that they carved Jesus' tomb from was limestone. Amen. And you guys could Google that. It's historical. Limestone in the Hebrew is seed and it means plaster that's what li limestone means in uh in hebrew it means plaster plaster is used to make mortar uh cement or it's used to coat something to seal up the cracks it can be molded and then i got it written down right here the rock that jesus's tomb was carved from was from limestone and also the rock bed. Etta, what happened here? Guys, can you guys hear me? That was so weird. I come against Satan in the name of Jesus. It was, it was telling me that it wanted to deactivate my account just now. Amen. But you guys could hear me? I don't know, Chanel. It just said... Uh, it said that it wanted to deactivate. So, okay, where was I? Because I got the uh, hinder just now. Okay, the rock bed that Jesus was laid on when they laid him to rest was uh, made out of limestone, limestone too. Now, why, why is this important? The meaning of limestone. It means plaster in Hebrew. Plaster was used to fix things. When Jesus died, he became, he became the building block for us. He is the rock on which we are laid. Amen. He's the foundation. He's the one who healed. He's the one who set free. We are broken people. And he's the one who who seals up the cracks. Remember that God is the, uh, the potter and we are the clay. And this clay, these bodies of ours become broken. We become really messed up, guys. And Jesus is the one to fix it all. Plaster fixes things. And it's what Jesus did. What happened in that tomb. Healed us. Delivered us. Set us free. Amen. Where we were once broken, now we are restored. 
Plaster is used to restore things. It's used to build things. Amen. So what Jesus did on the cross, and guys, I know we know this, but I am just amazed by this one tree, this, this myrrh that, that God told me to look into. It came to be so, like, I'm so amazed that this tree grew by limestone and it all points back to the death of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All of God's creation points back to Jesus. It points back to the cross, to the redemptive work of what Jesus did on the cross. Amen. Now, one more thing I want to talk about, guys. Or no, a few more things. I got a couple more things to, uh, to get here. In order to obtain myrrh from this tree, Kamifora myrrh, it had to been wounded. The tree had to been wounded. It had to been cut. Amen. And then the resin would come out. The resin would come out and it would come out in the shape of tears. Remember how myrrh comes from the Hebrew word Mara, meaning bitterness. What does people do when they are bitter? They cry. Now the tree had to been wounded and you could say that the tree cried because it was wounded. And this is what happens to us guys when we crucify the flesh. It feels bitter, but it is healing. Amen. It's a pleasing aroma unto God. Our tears are a pleasing aroma to God when we say no to the things that we want to do and say yes to God's plan and purpose for our life. Amen. To bring glory unto his name. Because remember, guys, we wasn't created for our own good pleasure. We was created for the glory of God. We were created to bring glory unto his name. We was created, guys, to, to build up the kingdom of heaven of what he did on the cross. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Everything leads back to the cross. Everything. Hallelujah. But it had to be, this tree had to be wounded so that the myrrh could come out. Now, remember guys, earlier I was saying how this tree, the, the tree is named Kamifora. Kamifora myrrh. And the Greek meaning for this uh, tree means gum bearing. So what does that mean for us? It means each and every one of us, each and every one of us bear this anointing inside of us. We all have this anointing, but in order for the anointing to come out, we have to be crushed just like the olive. In order to make olive oil, the olive had to been crushed. Oil represents an anointing of God. Amen. It has to, and just like uh, the wine, in order to make wine, the grapes had to been crushed. So you guys understand what, like what I'm trying to uh, paint the picture for you guys. The hard things that you go through in life, they are not for no reason. They are to bring glory unto God. Your tears are not for no reason, but you have to have faith. You have to cling unto the Lord your God. Amen. It pleases God when you go through suffering the way that Jesus went through suffering. When somebody hurts you and you don't say a word, but guess what? I'm going to tell you guys the truth. I've been through many persecutions and I've had so many people hurt me in my life. And uh, I'm going to testify of what God done in my life. Once upon a time, I was a spitfire and I argued for sport. If anybody said anything to me out of the way, something that I didn't like, and if it offended me, I, I this mouth would have had a thousand words to say on top of your one. And I was the kind of person that if you would have say something not all that serious to me, I was the kind of person who would go below the belt. I would want to hurt you. I would want to really, really hurt you. That's the kind of person I was. When I came to Christ, it took time for me to get to this way. But glory be to God, he delivered me from that. But see, I had to want to change. 
I had to want to be set free from these things. I had to want to look like Christ. I had to die with Christ. Amen. You see, when people were mocking and scoffing at Jesus and saying all these jungale prame to our Lord and Savior, he didn't say a word. Now, going back to what, what God done in my life, I was a very mean person. And if I had something to say, I would say it. And I didn't care what you thought about it. And I didn't care what you thought about me. I would just say it. But when I came to God and my, my heart started to really long and yearn to be more and more like Christ, I started to be quiet. He gave me that self-control to shut up when every, when every person would go against me. Because guess what, guys? When you follow Christ, the world will hate you. Christians are not very liked. When you, when you start to follow the Lord and you walk out of the world and you no longer do the things that you were doing when you was in the world, people don't like it. People get offended because people think that you're judging them just because you walked out of the things that they're still in. And so they get offended toward you and they'll start to say things out of the way to hurt you. But that is a spirit behind them. We fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and rulers and wicked darkness of, and in the heavenly realm. Amen. But my point I'm trying to say is it crushed. I had to crush my flesh and it took every ounce of strength inside of me, the Lord's strength, to not say anything back. Am I perfected in this? No. No, but I strive to. But were there many instances in my life where it hurted me and it, it absolutely pained my flesh. I, I even remember, guys, getting so persecuted to the point of I, I would have uh, pain in my body from the anxiety of just not to say a word back to these people because I didn't want to make Jesus look bad in my life. I didn't want to ruin my witness. Amen. And it caused pain in my body. This is a true story. And this, this happened to me many times. Uh, and that's just one instance that I'm trying to, uh, to paint the picture to you guys that denying your flesh and crucifying your flesh is painful, even physically, even physically, it's painful when you want to do what you want to do but you don't do it for the sake of Christ, that is painful. It's a crushing, but that crushing releases a beautiful aroma unto God. Amen. When the enemy entices you, I keep seeing a casino when the enemy entices you to go to the casino and your flesh is dying to go there because you hear the slot machines ringing you, you and and you have that that feeling in your body oh i gotta go because i know i'm gonna hit but you say no to that flesh it's painful but oh lord how pleasing it is to god to crush your flesh, to crucify the passions to the flesh, how pleasing it is. When you don't know what you're going to do to make any money, and you, we might be in businesses that are not pleasing unto the Lord, and God is tugging on your heart to step out of it. Right? And you don't know what, how you're going to pay your bills. You don't know how you're going to put food on the table. And God tugged on your heart to step out of that business. And you be obedient. It's painful. It's crushing to the flesh. It's very painful to say no to your will and to say yes to God's will. It's painful. And yeah, there's times where you, you might suffer. You might suffer. 
but it's pleasing to God because he's going to give you what you need. Seek first the kingdom of God and then all else will be added unto you. Will worrying add uh, another cubit to your stature? It cannot. It can't. Worrying could do nothing. But praying can, can do everything for you. The Bible says pray about everything. Pray about it all. Trust in the Lord your God. But when you're struggling financially and you know that you can make a few dollars really quick if you uh, put that psychic, if you turn that psychic line on, but you know that God told you not to, he called you out of that unrighteous business. And then you decide to listen to God and say no to your flesh. How please you... We, we release that, that beautiful uh, scent of myrrh because your flesh is dying now. And you're becoming alive with Christ. Hallelujah. Now I want to tell everybody here, I'm not, I'm not coming after you and I'm not trying to hurt you. I used to do all of these things. Everything that I just named, I was in a casino. I used to... Uh, I used to um, gamble, I used to party, I used to drink, I used to do all these things. I, uh, I was a fortune teller, I was a scam artist, I used to love to um, get things for free, yeah, because that's what Homa do, it's what we were taught, it's all that we knew, right? But I had to be retrained, a new mind. I had, when I came to Christ, he told me, daughter, you can't you can't follow me and still keep the world. I cannot walk with God and hold hands with the enemy. I could only have one master. And my master is Jesus, not my flesh, not the enemy. My master is God. Amen. So I decided, even though it was hard, I decided to follow after the will of God and what he wanted in my life. For his glory. I had to put to debt the things that my flesh desired. And I had to go through these valley seasons where I had to be crushed. And I didn't know what I was going to do, but I had all I had was faith. All I had was trust. Even when I didn't hear God, even when I didn't feel God, and the days that I cried and cried and cried my eyes out when I was in depression for months and months and months and just wanting comfort from God, I didn't get that comfort that I needed. The one that I wanted and really the comfort that I wanted was to get out of my, my hard situation. But God put me in the hard situation so that the, the world can come out of me. So that things that the world instilled within me can now come out. So that I can be that pleasing aroma to God. So now guys, let's go to Revelation chapter 2 verses 8 through 11. Amen. Revelation chapter 2, verse 8 through 11. Obedience is salvational. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Obedience. See, people will tie obedience to works, but it's not. Obedience is what we do when we love Jesus. If we claim to love Jesus, we will walk in his way. We will do what he says. Amen. What, not because we fear hell, but because we fear hurting Christ. That's what the fear of the Lord is. The fear of the Lord is not fearing going to hell. Fear of the Lord is fearing hurting the one that you love. When you're so infatuatedly in love with your spouse, you don't want to hurt him by cheating on him. By going, forgive me guys for saying it like this, but going after another man. Or if you're a man on this live stream going after another woman, you don't want to hurt your wife. That's what we do 
when we we know that we're the bride of Christ. And when we're in relationship with Jesus and we decide to run after the world, we were cheating on Jesus with the world. And we don't want to hurt him like that. So the fear of the Lord, guys, is not fear of hell, but it's fear of inflicting hurt and pain in the one that you love. So I pray in Jesus' name that all on this live tonight will receive the fear of the Lord. Not fear of hell, but fear of hurting you, O God. I pray, Jesus, that we will seek to please you in all that we do. Whatever we're doing, wherever we're at, Father God, that we please you in our pain, in our afflictions, Father. I pray that we please you, Father that we are a sweet aroma unto your throne, my King. In Jesus' name, thank you for this word, Father God. Revelations chapter 2, verses 8 through 11 says, The Persecuted Church. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna, write these things, says the first and the last, who was dead and came to life who was dead and came to life. I know your works, your tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. See, Jesus is telling this church that they're going to suffer walking with jesus is not a, a is a life uh, free from tribulation and trials walking with jesus there's time where we are going to have sufferment and it's a part of god's plan amen indeed the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. This church was named Smyrna, and they are the the, the persecuted church. They was the church that suffered the most out of all of them. They went through persecution. They, were, they went through uh, poverty. They went through tribulations. But they did not give up on God. This was one of two churches out of all seven churches that Jesus only commended. Is, is, uh, is Sarah still in here? Shout out to Sarah because... She taught me a lot about revelations. God bless my sister in Christ. This church was, uh, like I was saying, this church was one of two churches out of all seven churches who uh, Jesus only commended. Amen. He only had good things to say. So Smyrna, he only spoke highly of. And uh, Philadelphia, the church of Philadelphia, God um, commended these two churches. All the other churches he spoke good of, but he also had bad things to say about them. But the persecuted church and uh, the faithful church, I think that's what it was. Yeah, Philadelphia, I think they were the faithful church. God commended them. Now, Smyrna comes from the root word, Myrrh. And this church suffered, but this church was pleasing unto God. And Jesus is saying, guys, that if we endure sufferment and we don't if and we don't fall away from him and we don't turn back to the world, but we cling to him, he will give us the crown of life. 
Amen. If you're going through something right now, give it to Jesus and just know that you're being pleasing unto God by not giving into what your flesh really wants to give into. But you're crucifying those passions unto God. Amen. Now, one more thing I want to say. Queen Esther, in the book of Esther, before she got married to her husband, the king, King Artaxerxes, I think is how you say it, she prepared herself with myrrh. She anointed herself with myrrh for six months before she could have been with her husband. Amen. Our sufferment here on this earth, clinging to Christ, when we allow these beautiful, this beautiful sweet aroma to come forth from us through our suffering and not giving up on Christ, we're preparing ourselves for our bridegroom to come. Remember, we're the bride of Christ, and God is saying that as we as we suffer for God, we are preparing ourselves with beautiful aromas unto God. We're we're making ourselves ready for him to come and get us. Amen. Myrrh smells very beautiful, Chanel. I have anointing oil that smells like myrrh and it smells so beautiful. So yes, guys, this word is salvational. It is salvational. If you want to follow Christ, you have to crucify your flesh. And when you do that, you will be a you you're preparing yourself for Christ's coming. You're making yourself ready for your bridegroom. Amen. So that was the word, guys. I pray that it fell on good soil, Lord. I pray, Jesus, that your whoever this word was for, I pray that it helped them. I pray that it uplifts and encourages them, Father. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that we all, Lord, would be a pleasing aroma unto your throne, Father. That we all, Lord Jesus, would prepare ourselves for your coming, Jesus. That every single one of us, Father, like Queen Esther, who prepared herself with myrrh and aloes and all beautiful scents for her King, Jesus, I pray that we will do the same, Father, by sharing in your sufferment, Father God crucifying ourself, Father, to the cross the way that you did, Father, dying to our old self and rising in a new life in Christ, Father, that we will be ready for you to snatch us away, God. Oh, Lord, help us to be ready for your coming. I pray, Jesus, that the next time we go through something painful, that we'll look back on this word and we will rem remember, Father God, that it had to happen, oh, Lord, that it's for your glory, oh, Lord. I thank you, Father God. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Amen. Glory goes to God, Sarah. Whenever you're ready, we're going to go on and we're going to share that word. So there's a word that uh, God gave to me. And he confirmed it to my sister, Sarah. And it's about uh, Revelation. And uh, soon, soon we're going to share this word for his glory. And it's a doozy. <laughs> but it's all for his glory. Amen. So I am, uh, I'm going to end this live. But I pray God's blessing and peace over each and every one of you. And I love all of you guys. And I pray, oh, one more thing I'm going to tell you, because uh, if there's new people in here, I really want, I really hope that you guys can go um, follow my YouTube account. Uh, subscribe to it, please, guys, because I'm trying to go live on YouTube because I don't know what's going to happen. Start speaking in Jesus name. Amen. Father, I pray for Mason to speak in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, that you would loosen his tongue. Father, that you would cause all chains to break from him. Father, I come against the enemy, Lord Jesus, who is keeping him from speaking, Father. And Lord Jesus, that he will be released from this, Father. 
I pray that you loose him in the name of Jesus, Father. And Lord, that he would speak, that he would speak, that he would speak, Father. Praises unto your holy name. Father, that he would begin to prophesy, Father. In your holy name we pray this prayer, God. Amen. So anyways, guys, if you guys could uh, please follow my YouTube. Yes, um, Carla, can you? There you go. They don't call her speedy for no reason, guys. <laughs> this is my YouTube. It's uh, Can you pin it? What the? Pin this comment. Okay. Because I'm... Uh, I don't know. The government is trying to ban TikTok. And this, this was um, my main place where I do ministry, guys. And look at... Whatever God wants to do, God is more than able to save this app, guys. But if if he decides to let it go, then we have YouTube, we have other platforms and we can't uh we can't quit the ministry just because one one uh it might be closing down, but we want to pray that God would intervene and save it in Jesus name. But just in case, please go um, subscribe to my YouTube. I need 50 su subscribers so that I can go live. I can go live on Instagram, guys, but I could only reach those who follow me. I love TikTok because you could get a wide variety of viewers. Amen. Like you could get anybody. We can reach a non-believer. Most of my followers on Instagram are believers. We want to reach the non-believer. Amen. So, God bless you guys. Uh, pray for you. Father, I pray for DeAndre, Lord. I don't know what your son is looking for from you, Father God. I don't know what he needs, but you know, Father God. And I just pray, Father God, for, for a breakthrough. I pray, God, for direction. I come against confusion in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for financial breakthrough, Jesus. I pray, God, that you would open up the windows of heaven, Father, and that you would pour out upon your son I, I pray father that you would deliver him father from uh things lord that are enticing him that are tempting him father the thing that he is struggling with father god lord you know you know i pray god that you would break that chain of bondage off of him father and that he would walk in your freedom my king in jesus holy name peace upon my brother a sound mind my lord in jesus name amen Amen. Uh, I think I did, Tiffany. But I gotta, I gotta see. I tried to put, no, my Instagram is on there, not my, but I don't know how to put it. I'm one of those puria that don't really know how to work these things. So I want to be the professionals, but no. <laughs> Sonia, she just went to the hospital. Father, I pray for Sonia right now, God, and I pray that you be with her. I plead your blood over her, Father God, and I pray that your hand be on her, Jesus, that you would heal her from any ailment. We come against infirmity, Father God, and I pray peace over um, Katie, Lord Jesus, and I pray, God, that you would help her to lead her out of this hospital, Father God, for your glory, Devla, and that she would be made whole in Jesus' name. Father, we give you glory for Gracie, and I thank you, Father God, because you are already loosening her tongue. I thank you, Heavenly Father, because I know, Jesus, that there is breakthrough, that you're already working on it, Father God. And I thank you, Father God, because I know that Samantha and Jacob, Father God, are um, they have peace, Father. But I pray that you continue to pour out peace on Samantha and Jacob, Father Lord. And help them to continue to wait on you, Lord. And that you, God, would break every chain, Father that's holding them back from their breakthrough, Father, from their healing. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you guys. I'm going to end the live. And I guess, uh, guys, keep me in prayer because I... Uh, I think I'm going to go and share this on um, this same word on uh, Venus's account, Women at the Well. 
uh, on Instagram. If you guys want to follow, it's, uh, it's called Women at the Well. God bless you guys. Good night. <laughs>